And welcome back to Open Your Eyes. We're now venturing off into our third and final segment for the morning. Diamond Peace Production and Young Star Entertainment. Pretty for a Dark Girl Project. What is that? I'll tell you what, we've got the folks in to tell us all about it. As a matter of fact, Just Jewel, she's an artist, she's in with us. And also Tariq Young, Director of Video, Young Star Entertainment, representation yes, over this side. Guys, good morning and welcome. Morning, morning. Morning, morning. morning Belize. It's nice to have you guys in, man. Uh, Pretty for a Dark Girl project. What is that? Okay, what Pretty for a Dark Girl means is all my life I've been told I was pretty for a dark girl. And I didn't realize it was actually an insult until I was older. Because, you know, when you're younger, someone says, oh my gosh, you're pretty you for dark. You just hear pretty. You yeah, just hear yeah, pretty yeah. and you're yeah. just like, oh wow, look at me. And then when it wasn't until I got older, I realized that it was actually an insult because it's actually insinuating that dark girls are ugly, are ugly. Yeah. but I made the exception to be pretty for a dark one. Wow. That's right. Wow. That's right. And it's actually, you know, what, what, what Jewel's doing down here, we're doing a music video as well as a documentary project mm -hmm. uh, surrounding the song. When I first heard the song, you know, uh, she'd reached out to me online and we talked and she said, I have the song. I got recommended you to do a video. And I, first few words, of the first few lines of the song, I realized what the messaging and what the content of the song yeah. and how yeah. important it was. Mm -hmm. As a father to a young, dark-skinned girl myself, I have nieces and friends and, you know, people that I know that yeah. have maybe faced and can relate to the music and relate to the lyrics. And Jules just has an exceptional voice and talent as well. Yeah. I immediately said, yes, let's fight. Let's figure out how we can do this and let's see how we can grow it as Grow it also because yeah. beyond the music video, we're also doing a documentary project on this kind of topic and that kind of mm -hmm. passive racism yeah. and mm -hmm. you know stereotyping that happens and how this can really affect people and see effects that maybe we aren't discussing or even talking about. Yeah. Juice, Juice, t tell us about yourself. Where are you from? What are you, okay. what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. I'm from New York. I was born and raised New York, in New York. My mother is American. My father's Belizean. He lives in Belize now. Um, I play the drums, I play the bass, I sing, I act, I model, um, I have like three different jobs, like I'm just, I do a lot, I yeah. do, I do a lot, um, but other than that, I'm just all about like spreading positivity, spreading yeah. women's empowerment, uh, reaching out to the younger generation, basically letting them know just to embrace the skin you're in, because nowadays we see a lot of stuff on the media, and we see the girls like, you know, changing their skin color or getting certain enhancements and stuff like that. And I just want to, if I could just reach one girl, just let them know it's like, you can love yourself. As long as you love yourself, you don't have to worry about anything yeah. else. That's right. Yeah. Where would you say this influence comes from? I would say it would have to come from my mother. Like yeah. my mother is like really my hero. She's extremely strong and she's been through a lot and she's always like instilled and all five of her kids, she has five kids. Mm. So she instilled in all five of us like self-love and we was brought up in the church. And mm. with that yeah. being said, that's just the whole, I guess, like Your the whole foundation. concept. Yeah, like yeah. my whole foundation was in the church. So she instilled that in us from young. With such a diverse background, you spoke of, you know, playing instruments, mm -hmm. you still, you're doing many different jobs. Yes. Um, why did you make the choice to use music as your outlet to push this positive message? Because music is universal. Yeah. Like everyone, that's something everyone can relate to. And since I dropped the song, which was last year in February, I've gotten so much feedback like, oh my gosh, I go through this all the time. Like I was told this all the time. And like so many women, I guess they weren't, they didn't want to speak out or couldn't find a way to speak out. But through my song, they was like, oh my gosh, like this song is super relatable. I have daughters, I have this, like everyone can really relate to this. So I just felt like music would have been the best way so to it's put a, it out. It's a really interesting time, especially in America. Yes. Um, yeah. And I think that what we are seeing is a shift, mm -hmm. but it also comes with a lot of unlearning of practices mm -hmm. so there's learning to respect each other but unlearning things that people do and your primary example the name of your song pretty for a black girl dark is ex girl. Uh, for a dark for girl, girl <laughs> is exactly that yes it's the backhanded comments that people mm -hmm. give that they don't realize or sometimes they do right. realize mm -hmm. is um is actually it, it can be perceived in a negative way right because in my song it's the the first word is um not the first word, but in my song, it says 
it be your own people that be saying this stuff, saying that I was never told by a white person or by a Spanish person, oh my gosh, you're so pretty. I was told by this by black people. Yes. Yeah. And some of it is like, um, like she said, some of it is like ignorance, like just not knowing that that is actually an insult. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then also with like the word dark, when you hear your dark skin, like dark is just a word that's connotated around negative. Like yeah. when you hear dark, you think of, oh my gosh, you're scary. That's like, scary. Right. Yeah. So yeah, when yeah. you hear dark skin there, we already look yeah. out like this. And it's like black people is separating us. They making the light skins here and they're making the dark, dark skins, skins here. Yeah. And that's where the issue of colorism comes in. Yeah. Because yeah. it's like we're already separated. Why would you want to separate us even, even more? more? Yeah. You know, that's so funny. Shades of black. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And it's a exactly. real situation. It is. A hundred percent real. Till this day, a hundred percent. We're still t we're still telling each other, I'm a dark skinned guy. I mean, mm -hmm. like I dark, you know, and mm -hmm. people would still try to demoralize me by yep. saying, you just black. Mm -hmm. and, and and just, just using black. that word. Yes. Yep. That word is actually a bad word. There are, mm -hmm. there are free phrases like uh, change monkey for black dog mm -hmm. kettle the cost pot black you know you know so things like this but then again now you're you're because your dad is Belizean so yes. you're home too yes how did this collaboration happen from uh, you know diamond and peace production to young star entertainment well, tell us about the collab there so I wrote um, my sister Miriam and I asked I was like Miriam I want to do a video for pretty for a dark girl like do you recommend anyone so automatically she said, to read. <laughs> yeah. automatically she said, we worked on a video shoot before, like he's good, he's yeah. Belizean, you can like fly to Belize. I think like a week before we had just worked on something with- uh, Yeah, with Mary, oh, yeah. Yes. Mary yeah. But she's like, you can come to Belize, like he's dope, he's good. And then since then, Tariq and I, we've just been exchanging information, talking, I gave him some ideas of the concept. He came and he, um, he said, okay, well, we could do this too. Miriam, my sister, also helped me with the concept yeah. 100%. We had Miriam on the show quite yeah, a few times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So she helped me with the concept. So, yeah. you, know, it's, it's, so uh, you can tell it's a talented family show. Yeah. Yeah. Come from, so Miriam is your sister? Yes. Cool. And Musa, and when I, like I said, when I first heard the song, I'd just come off this project and I, this year I'd made a commitment to myself, as, you, as most people in Belize know that I'm very involved in the industry and developing yeah. the industry. Yeah. So this year I was going to be very conscious about the kind of messaging I was putting out in terms mm -hmm. of the content. Yeah. You yeah. Know, and as soon as I heard this, and I played it for my, for my daughter, and she was like, Daddy, I like that song. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, good, that's the next project. And we've been talking. So we just met officially for the first time, like yesterday. Yesterday, yeah. Really? Oh. You know, and she was at the airport shooting yeah. something while I was coming and while I was waiting on yeah, the yeah, line. Yeah. 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 So right, this, yeah. this first trip really is, um, we're going to do some of the um, shooting for the music video, but we're also looking for um, support and sponsorship towards a documentary project, yeah. which is going to be visiting different communities around the country mm -hmm. and speaking to different women's groups and young ladies. We just did a talk yesterday with uh, Sadie, Sadie Vernon High School. Oh, I got to right. speak with some of so the So as you got in, you, you went, straight, went to straight to work. Straight from the straight airport. So yes. what's the documentary about? The documentary is, is about the kind of, like we said, the passive kind of racism and the underlying you know, racism yeah. that, that may exist that we don't usually talk about. Mm -hmm. For me, you know, with our culture, when things become taboo, we are quick to shy away from it. We don't that's even right. want to hear about it. We don't that's even right. want to speak well, about it. Well, there are it. many who will still argue and say there's no racism in Belize. And that's why we have to mm. shed light on <laughs> those instances that actually occur from real people. So who yeah. we're looking to focus on are people that have experienced this firsthand that's and right. being able yeah. to give them a platform to convey that message that, look, it does exist, but then what? How do we address it? Really Who's out here actually doing the work? Because there are people out here that are doing the work for you know, uh, groups, women's groups and at-risk youth and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. that don't get fully that light shined on them, the positive image. Because mm -hmm. one of the lines, my favorite lines in the song, what Jules says, says is, this isn't a sad song. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's a serious, serious message, but it's not a sad song. It's a celebration right. of who you are. And we mm -hmm. feel like that messaging is important. And that's what we want to come across and bring the visuals to as we mm -hmm. do the music video and the documentary. You know, like we said, I'm hoping, you know, a portion of these proceeds as we see it are gonna go to support supporting groups yeah. that work on issues like this. Yeah. Had you been you know? to Belize before? Yes, I've been to Belize. The first time I came to Belize was in 2014. Okay. Really? Yeah, but I only stayed for like three days and it was raining. Oh. So I didn't even get to go to like San Pedro and the Keys or none of that. Yeah. Yeah. Thinking about so it this now. is yeah, going yeah. to be I, if we have yeah. a Belize experience. Have enough time, yeah. Yeah. We're trying to squeeze it in. We're yeah, we're trying to squeeze it in. But if not, it, you know, I just came here to work. So when, well, so when, I think it's yeah. because the question I, I asked you that mm -hmm. because I think that what you're talking about, especially the documentary part of it, is really going to be yeah. a very unique story. Mm -hmm. I've heard people say there's not racism in Belize. I don't believe that. I think that there are. Yeah. Um, divides that yeah. exist in Deep this country, mm -hmm. and some that yeah. go way back into or colonial past. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, 
but it looks different from what we see on television oh, in geez. terms of what's yeah. happening. Nobody's in burning the crosses, States. nobody's right. doing that yeah. kind of blatant like aggressive. Like you said, passive, passive yeah. 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 So I mm -hmm. think it's really an important story to tell. What touched you about your Belizean roots, about wanting to tell that story here instead of where you actually experience colorism? Right. So I've, like I said, I've only been to Belize one time. Yeah. So I was like, and I'm also a flight attendant. So oh. yeah, I fly mm -hmm. for free. So I'm just. And you only came once? Yeah. I know. No, but I, I just got a probation like six months ago. Uh, yeah, like so I just started. So okay. um, I was like, you know what? I want to do this in Belize. Like, I want to get out there. I want to embrace the culture, learn yeah. more about, you know, the Belizean culture. And my father, he was, you know, telling me stuff, taking, taking me around like his neighborhood. And I was just like waving at people and then waving at me. I just wanted to just to be around something different. Yeah. I just wanted different. I didn't want to stay in New York and stay in my comfort zone. Like I wanted to be taken out of my comfort zone and just like learn more about Belize and get in get in touch with like the Belizean culture. And one of the first things she asked me when in our initial conversations was like, do you think this song will resonate in Belize? Do you mm -hmm. think this is an issue in Belize? And what we found as we've been putting together the production that it's resonating very strongly. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. You know, a portion of the video is gonna be a compilation of uh, some known dark women mm -hmm. and popular dark women and faces in Belize mm -hmm. and the first reaction is usually yes 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 because I can relate to that yeah, yeah. resonate with that Super yeah. relatable. and that's you know when I told her about these things she was like well definitely you yeah. know we got to do it and let's you explore because it's exploratory the documentary project is going to be exploratory I think too it's hard for us to see it in Belize because we don't have homogenous groups like we're all mm -hmm. mixed mm -hmm. we just mix to different levels the majority I would say of Belizeans, um, excluding people who perhaps moved here from Central America, uh, have some sort of African ancestry. Mm -hmm. You do. Uh, we don't really have white people, mm -hmm. <laughs> if I'm to say that. Yes. Um, we just have different shades of color, but it doesn't mean that it doesn't allow for a divide. That's right. um, and so that that is really, I'm really interested in hearing more about that story as you yeah. guys unfold. Well, we hope you'll be one of the people that we get to interview and talk about. <laughs> you know these issues yeah. going forward and that's also you know if if you're interested or if you have a story that you want to share your experience and you're willing to talk to us put on camera you know yeah you can reach out to us you can contact jewel my at, email is yeah. jewel jones free at gmail.com jewel jones free, free yeah. at gmail.com two u's in jewel no no no, no it's just jewel, jewel jones, jones free okay at gmail the two uh, uses for like we're gonna make sure we, we, we right. post that up so nobody gets it okay confused. Like you can find you can find her on instagram instagram, yeah. my instagram is j-u-u-s-t-j-e-w-e-l so when does production start uh we're shooting oh, well production man. started from yesterday well, well, yeah, we're going. Yeah. but uh we're doing <laughs> a few of the scenes yeah. wednesday and thursday we got to shout out dys and um Rusted Corner that are allowing us some location oh, okay. support with that and all the people who so far volunteered their time to yes. be out at Thursday. But we're still open for a few people. And once Jewel goes back, we're also going to be continuing because we have separate scenes that don't include her that okay. we're going to be calling on people. Right. What would you say? You know, this is clearly a message that you have embraced for mm -hmm. yourself um, and kind of just a coming to terms okay. uh, with society. What difference has it made in you? that you are so intent that you can at least touch one more girl and hopefully more. You know what, with now, like I was speaking to the girls um, yesterday, like this generation has had the highest amount of suicides. Mm -hmm. The highest amount of suicides for the younger ones, like from ages nine yeah. to like 13, 14. Mm -hmm. The highest amount of suicide. And that is sad. Yeah. Like that is really it's sad. Scary. Yeah, it's scary. So it's like, if we can just change that their mindset because not everybody you know was brought up in a home with with even parents not everybody yeah. has their parents or or their mother or their father so the reason why i'm so big about this message is that i just want to be someone that you know you can look up to that you can tell them embrace your long arms embrace your big lips embrace your nose like yeah. embrace your feet mm. like this is how we were your made yeah. like, embrace Love your hair yeah. Yeah. yeah this is just how we were made so if you can just love yourself there's nothing or anything anyone could ever tell you if you just love the skin you're in yeah. that's right that's we're it. normal yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. No matter what, doesn't matter what you look like or how you look you are normal that's yep. right wow man tough 
I like, you know, we when like will we see this it. video? Yeah. I mean, you're talking about well, a quick shoot. I hear you guys right. talking about a packed schedule. Well, you know, uh, next month is Women's Month, and we're hoping to do a premiere. It, it'll be dependent largely on the support that we do get, because right. yeah. we do have some feelers out with additional sponsorship yeah. Yeah. to get this locked in. And if anybody's out there interested, like, again, we're going to appeal. That's my job to make sure you guys support. You'll be getting emails from me, all yeah. the companies. But, uh, <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna we're aiming for a March release because in the theme of Women's Month and everything, we, and we wanted to go. Well, we hope that you will be back to launch it here. Well, since we know you fly free, you know. You know. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you know I, that's not. I hope uh, we get to maybe play a song on our out or yeah. anything so that the audience yeah, can yeah, you know yeah. the tracks out on YouTube. It's everywhere. It's on iTunes, Spotify, iTunes, YouTube. So you title, can hear the everywhere. song, yes, and yes. more importantly, look in, look forward to the video that will mm -hmm. be shot yes. in Belize. Yes, yes. I right. love it. We can't know, wait right. to Thank see it. Thank you so much. Yeah. Best Thank of you. luck. And we hope we, we do hope you're back uh, yeah. to showcase the video with us when definitely, it's finished. Definitely. Oh, great. Thank you. All, All right. right. We're going to go ahead and take that final break now. And when we come back, we'll have our wrap up. So stay tuned. In my world. They say I'm pretty for a dark girl. Man, you know I really hate that. Sh and then they say you got some nice curls. Then turn around and say I must be mixed Man, I don't get it I try not to sweat it But day after day I keep getting questioned Like why?